Huawei has just broken its silence. In the face of one of the most aggressive global tech crackdowns we've ever seen, the Chinese tech giant has responded, and the stakes have never been higher. The United States and its allies are tightening the noose. New restrictions, export bans, and AI chip blacklists are being rolled out faster than companies can adapt. The target? Huawei and its growing influence in artificial intelligence, semiconductor design, and next-gen communications. But this isn't just about chips anymore. It's about power, about who controls the future of AI, and Huawei isn't backing down. In this video, we're diving into Huawei's official response, the intensifying global pressure, and how this is turning into a full-blown international tech standoff. You'll learn what's really happening behind the headlines, what Huawei plans next, and why this matters not just to China, but to the entire world economy. When the United States expanded its AI chip export restrictions in 2025, few expected Huawei to remain silent for long, and now, the company has responded, not just with words, but with a strategic and symbolic statement that signals it's ready for a long fight. Huawei's leadership released a carefully worded message stating that technological innovation cannot be suppressed and reaffirmed the company's commitment to building self-sufficient supply chains. While avoiding direct confrontation with Washington, Huawei emphasized its progress in domestic semiconductor development, pointing specifically to its partnership with SMIC. China's largest chipmaker. The tone of the response was calm but resolute. Huawei made it clear that despite the ongoing bans, it has no intention of backing down from the AI race. According to their statement, artificial intelligence will define the future of global competitiveness, and Huawei will continue to contribute to this future through responsible innovation. But behind the scenes, the message was louder than any press release. Huawei is doubling down on AI chip production inside China and it's doing so under heavy pressure. Industry insiders report that the company has significantly accelerated investment in its in-house chip design unit, High Silicon, despite the inability to access EUV lithography tools or collaborate with leading Western fabs like TSMC or Intel, Huawei is developing alternative processes to produce AI-capable chips domestically. The recently released Kirin 9X series, which was believed to be impossible under current sanctions, has already sparked global controversy. Analysts suspect SMIC was able to fabricate these chips using older DUV equipment but with creative process tricks that allow for surprisingly high performance. If true, it's a clear sign that China's semiconductor ecosystem is evolving faster than most Western officials anticipated. Huawei's statement also made one subtle but strategic move. It invited global partners who believe in open technology collaboration to continue working with them. This is a not-so-veiled attempt to encourage companies in the global south, as well as firms in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa to maintain ties despite U.S. pressure. At the same time, Chinese state media quickly amplified Huawei's response, framing it as a patriotic resistance to foreign economic coercion. On platforms like Weibo and Bilibili, the message resonated strongly, with hashtags like Huawei Fights Back and Saw China Chip Rise trending within hours. To observers, it's clear, Huawei is no longer just reacting. It's repositioning itself as a symbol of technological independence and national pride. But the real question is, how will the rest of the world respond? And what happens next as pressure on China's AI ecosystem continues to mount? Huawei's calculated response sent ripples far beyond China's borders, and governments around the world are reacting swiftly. The global crackdown on AI chip technology is no longer just an American initiative. What began as a unilateral U.S. export restriction has now evolved into a multilateral campaign involving key allies across Europe and Asia. In early May 2025, the U.S. Department of Commerce added additional AI accelerators, neural processing units, and high-bandwidth memory components to its entity list, further tightening the restrictions on exports to Huawei, SMIC, and other Chinese AI firms. These new measures not only restrict access to cutting-edge chips, but also bar companies from providing design tools, simulation software, and even cloud-based AI training infrastructure if it could benefit sanctioned Chinese firms. Shortly after, the European Union announced a coordinated compliance framework, signaling that European tech firms would face severe penalties if found violating export controls. Germany, the Netherlands, and the UK all home to major chip equipment and software companies, have pledged to align more closely with U.S. policies. ASML, a Dutch company that holds a near monopoly on EUV lithography tools, 
confirmed it had suspended all shipments of advanced photonics components to China, including to third-party Chinese partners suspected of rerouting equipment to Huawei. Japan, another major player in chip materials and precision tooling, has also stepped up. Tokyo announced its own set of restrictions targeting fluorinated polyamides and rare gas supplies used in semiconductor production. These moves are not just symbolic. They are designed to freeze China's ability to scale next-gen AI manufacturing. Meanwhile, South Korea is walking a tightrope. Home to Samsung and SK Hynix, two of the world's largest memory and foundry players, Seoul has shown reluctance to fully sever tech ties with China, given its critical trade relationship. However, under growing pressure from Washington, South Korea has quietly started reducing certain exports and has increased internal reviews of licensing procedures. But it's not just governments tightening the screws. Private companies are responding too. NVIDIA, AMD, and Qualcomm have all issued revised compliance guidelines to their global partners. Cloud computing providers like AWS and Microsoft Azure have reportedly begun auditing accounts linked to Chinese AI development teams to ensure compliance with the latest restrictions. The financial markets have taken notice. Shares of Western chipmakers have experienced volatility amid fears of retaliation from China, while Chinese tech stocks have shown sudden surges in response to nationalist sentiment and perceived resilience. And yet, the tighter the grip, the more resistance seems to grow. While Washington frames the crackdown as a necessary step to prevent military misuse of AI, many in the global South view it as techno-protectionism aimed at preserving Western dominance. Huawei's defiance has thus become a rallying point, not only within China, but across a range of emerging economies that feel left behind in the current tech order. As global pressure intensifies, the question becomes, is this crackdown containing China's AI ambitions or fueling them? In part three, we'll examine the deeper, less visible impact, how this tech battle is reshaping AI development itself. While headlines focus on geopolitics and sanctions, a more subtle and far-reaching transformation is underway, one that could fundamentally reshape the direction of artificial intelligence itself. The ongoing chip crackdown isn't just about stopping China from accessing powerful hardware, it's also about disrupting how AI is being developed, trained, and deployed across the world. At the heart of the issue is computational capacity, the fuel for modern AI breakthroughs. Training large language models, generative AI systems, and autonomous algorithms requires enormous amounts of processing power, typically provided by high-end GPUs like NVIDIA's A100 and H100 chips. These chips have become essential infrastructure for tech companies, startups, and research labs around the globe. By cutting Huawei and other Chinese firms off from these tools, the West is essentially trying to slow down China's AI innovation engine. But the unintended consequence is a massive push toward alternative architectures and decentralization. Chinese companies are now investing in custom-built AI chips that don't rely on Western IP, such as Huawei's Ascend series, which, while not as powerful as NVIDIA's flagship chips, are being rapidly improved for specific tasks like natural language processing and computer vision. Meanwhile, software innovation is stepping in to close the gap. Chinese researchers and engineers are optimizing open-source AI frameworks to run more efficiently on lower-tier hardware. Techniques like quantization, pruning, and model distillation, once considered niche, are now being scaled and mainstreamed to compensate for hardware limitations. This shift is creating a bifurcation in global AI development. On one side, the U.S. and its allies continue to build toward centralized, large-scale AI infrastructure powered by the most advanced chips. On the other, China and other sanctioned nations are pursuing leaner, more adaptive systems built to function under constraint. In some areas, such as edge AI, where models run on local devices instead of massive cloud servers, this could even give Chinese firms a long-term advantage. There's also a growing concern among AI ethicists and academics that geopolitical fragmentation will lead to closed AI ecosystems, where models are no longer shared globally, but become state-controlled tools. This could hinder collaboration, transparency, and safety research in ways that are hard to reverse. Moreover, the restrictions are forcing talent redistribution. Chinese AI talent that once worked in U.S.-affiliated research labs is now returning home or founding domestic startups. The result? A more insular but increasingly self-reliant Chinese AI ecosystem. One underreported development is the growth of AI training centers in regions outside the U.S. and China, such as the Middle East, India, and Southeast Asia, 
where companies are trying to build their own sovereign AI stacks. This suggests the ripple effects of the crackdown could redefine not just US-China relations, but the entire global map of AI power. In short, the chip ban is accelerating innovation in unexpected directions. It's no longer just a blockade. It's a catalyst. Behind Huawei's confident response lies a far more coordinated and long-term strategy, one that includes not just corporate resilience, but deep government support and industrial realignment. In the face of unprecedented sanctions, China is adapting rapidly, and at the heart of that adaptation is SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, the country's leading chip foundry. SMIC was once seen as a second-tier player in the global semiconductor space, but that perception is quickly changing. Despite being denied access to the world's most advanced EUV lithography machines, SMIC has reportedly found ways to manufacture 7 nanometers and even experimental 5 nanometer chips using modified DUV deep ultraviolet processes. These developments have stunned many Western analysts who assumed such technological feats were years away for China. But SMIC isn't working in isolation. The Chinese government has ramped up funding through its Big Fund, National Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, which injects billions into local semiconductor firms, universities, and research centers. In parallel, a new wave of chip nationalism is sweeping China, with local governments offering tax incentives, free land, and fast-track approvals to AI and chip startups. Huawei, SMIC, and other tech giants are now deeply intertwined in a state-backed innovation ecosystem. Their mission is clear. Build an independent semiconductor supply chain, from design to packaging, that can withstand Western pressure. In this environment, Huawei's High Silicon Unit is focusing more on AI-specific chips optimized for Chinese software environments, while SMIC scales its production methods to balance quantity and capability. Even if their chips don't yet rival NVIDIA or TSMC in raw power, moreover, China is actively investing in alternative tooling companies to reduce dependency on Western photolithography and chip design software. In 2025, several Chinese EDA, electronic design automation startups, received major government contracts with the goal of replacing US-based tools like Synopsys and Cadence over the next decade. At the same time, Beijing has tightened controls on rare earth exports, a strategic countermeasure that adds leverage in ongoing tech negotiations. SMIC's next moves will be watched closely by markets and policymakers alike. Its ability to deliver reliable, scalable chip production under sanctions could determine not just Huawei's future, but China's technological sovereignty for the next generation. In the final part, we'll wrap up the key takeaways and explore what this all means for global tech and for investors watching from the sidelines. Huawei's response to the global AI chip crackdown isn't just a defiant press release. It's a signal that we're entering a new era of technological realignment. What started as a US-led effort to limit China's access to advanced semiconductors has triggered a much larger wave of innovation, resistance, and geopolitical tension. From SMIC's accelerated chip production to Huawei's push for AI self-reliance, China is no longer trying to catch up. It's building a parallel ecosystem. Meanwhile, Western countries are tightening controls and global supply chains are fragmenting in ways we haven't seen since the Cold War. For investors, analysts, and tech enthusiasts, the message is clear. The battle for AI dominance is no longer just about who makes the fastest chip. It's about who controls the systems, the standards, and the narrative. As this story unfolds, we'll be here to break it down. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future updates on the global tech race. Got thoughts on Huawei's next move or the West's strategy? Drop a comment below. Let's discuss. Thanks for watching.